God can take the gift away as God has given the gift. Um, and it will be catastrophic. Um, and this country will um, simply um, be the lowest nation in the world instead of the highest, the poorest nation in the world instead of the richest, the weakest nation in the world instead of the strongest, and some other nation will be called to show the world the way of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know how it's going to play out because I was shown um, possibilities and I don't know if those possibilities are the way things may be or the way things will be. I don't know, I, I'm not clear on that. Um, our future could be so beautiful and the future that they showed me which isn't very far off within a couple hundred years which in fact I told them was impossibly um, soon it couldn't happen in a couple hundred years they assured me that with the intervention of God and the angels it could happen um, I don't know what's going to come about I have um, children and I have grandchildren I want them to have the uh, preferred future not the horrible possible future that they also showed me and um, it's all about a heart change um, we need to um, use our wealth we need to be using our power to bring God's love and God's goodness and God's blessings to the whole rest of the world and my experience happened in 1985. I've seen signs of good happening, and I've seen signs of bad happening, and I, don't, and I, I just don't know which way we're going. And I'm doing everything that I can with my life to be on God's side. They also told me that there is no sitting on the fence. You are either working for God's good, or you're opposed to God's good. To be indifferent to God's good is to be opposed to it. There, there's no middle ground. In this, if you will, um, battle between good and evil, there's nothing in between. You know, I would say that most people say, well, you know, I mean, I'm good, I'm not doing any harm. That's not good. That's evil. <laughs> you have to be out there loving God, loving your neighbor, and, and living that um, if you're really you know part of God's plan for this world um, this this is the day this is the moment to decide which way you're going to go and all those uh, seemingly hysterical fundamentalist evangelical preachers that are out there screaming and yelling are right on target. <laughs> you know, their message may be a little harsh and their means may be a little too confrontational, but they're, they're right. You know, um, we need to uh, convince people that they have to make a decision or that they're going to be on God's side or they're going to be opposed to God. The world that they showed me in the near future, in a couple hundred years from now, is a world that is difficult for me to understand or accept. There was some, um, what I saw was no visible signs of technology. If there, if there was technology, they hid it from me, <laughs> or it was so subtle <laughs> that I didn't even, I couldn't even see it. You know, maybe that's the case, but I, I assume that, like, in the future, it would be a world of, like, high technology, and they showed me a world of, um, not low technology, of no technology, where um, people's relationship with God, with the creation, and with one another was so intense that human beings controlled the weather of the planet. Not just for the welfare of human beings, but for the welfare of the entire planet. Um, everybody in the world 
was telepathically connected to everybody else in the whole world. Um, people raised food by simply, um, uh, I don't know, meditating or thinking about the food, and the food would just grow, and then they would pick it and eat it. I mean, it was, um, you know, not instantaneous, but it just happened before your eyes. I mean, a cabbage would grow from a seed to a full-blown cabbage in a matter of a few minutes. Uh, people lived in small communities. People could move from community to community freely if they wanted to. Most people didn't move around very much. Um, some communities put an emphasis on music, some communities put an emphasis on science, some communities put an emphasis on um, celebration, um, liturgy, worship. Some communities um, spent their time on uh, physical relaxation and, and enjoyment, and, um, sports, and that sort of thing. Um, some communities were very contemplative and did seemingly very little. Some communities were very active and sort of like um, were very much engaged with their environment, sort of um, what we would call gardeners, but they were literally environmental sculptors, you know, making these very beautiful places with the um, vegetation and the geology around them. I mean, different communities had different emphasis, but they lived in total harmony with the um, flora and the fauna around them in complete harmony with one another and the um, main emphasis of every community was the individuals in the community and most especially the children. Um, when people had experienced what they f felt was their full life experience, there would be a great celebration and they would lay down and they would um, die and their souls, their spirits, whatever, would be raised up to heaven. Um, dying was not seen as a sad thing or grievous thing. It was um, a joyous time. It was like it was celebrated as a birth. Um, people ate simply, dressed simply. From what I was shown, there were no possessions other than the clothes on their back and a few simple instruments like musical instruments or tools or things like that, which were pretty much shared communally. Um, it was a world that's very difficult for me to make any sense out of because it's like, you know, uh, there was great happiness, there was um, very little suffering, um, there was no disease because people could, um, he with, with um, laying on of hands, people could healed diseases immediately. The only um, real suffering that they showed me was sometimes people um, felt a sense of separateness and the community would um, allow these people to feel that but they would pray for that person, they would surround that person with love and bring that person back into the community. So it was, it was possible for people to move a little bit away from the spirit of the community but they were brought back into the community. No one was left, no one was ever lost for very long. But it was important sometimes for people to feel, you know, to appreciate what they had, they needed to, you know, lose a little bit of it once in a while. Um, the spirit of Christ lived in every heart, fully and completely. Um, it, it's a world that um, is so completely unlike the world that we live in, that just how can we ever get there? But they assured me that this was the world that God envisioned for us, and it's not that far away. One of the questions I asked them about was, what was heaven like? And I shouldn't tell you the answer because um, anybody that really knew what heaven was like wouldn't want to be here anymore and they'd want to be there because this is so inferior to heaven and heaven is so superior to this world in every way that um, it makes no sense to be here but you don't get to heaven by killing yourself <laughs> that's not um, 
that's a um, very unlikely way 